Hi, this is E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. I really can't think about a time that's been more challenging in my career to see patients. Uh, we're experiencing a whole new a, a challenge with delay and OR seeing patients in the clinic and, and so forth. And uh, there's a lot of variation about how this being implemented around the country. But one thing that's emerging sort of as a shining star here is the whole concept of telemedicine. And we're fortunate to be joined in this call by Dr. Evan Goldfisher. Evan has been a proponent and leader in this area for a long time. And we're going to uh, spend some time talking with him about that. Um, and first of all, in a way of introduction, Evan did his medical training at Cornell residency at the University of Chicago, and then did an endourology fellowship uh, with Arthur Smith in Long Island got an MBA, UMass, and has been involved with LUGPA and the CEO of, uh, of his group uh, uh, in the Hudson Valley and widely published. So we're very pleased to have you with us, Evan. And let me just start out by having you just talk about telemedicine and what has happened with you in your practice and what kind of advice do you give our urology colleagues listening? Sure, thank you very much for that uh, very nice introduction, David. So our group has been doing telemedicine for a while, but as you know, up until uh, about 10 days ago, it was highly restrictive in terms of where the patient had to be located, uh, what the diagnosis was, and what services could be rendered. And it, it has been kind of a slow uptake in the United States over the last couple of years. We've definitely been making progress, but all of a sudden, coronavirus hit, and uh, all bets are off now. It's it's a new world out there for telemedicine. CMS uh, relaxed restrictions uh, dramatically about 10 days ago, and a lot of the private payers have followed suit, realizing that we have to keep patients out of the office in order to keep them safe, in order to keep our staff, uh, staff safe, and yet still provide care. So I think this is really a great opportunity, and I don't think we're ever going to go backwards. I think this will be the new normal. But understand that uh, if you haven't been doing telemedicine in your practice and you just want to get going, uh, it's not just snap your fingers and it happens. First of all, uh, you've got to have a platform, and there are a whole lot of them out there, and I don't want to endorse any one of them, but there are a whole lot of apps that can be downloaded, and there's a lot of technology out there. So you've got to figure out which, which platform is right for your practice. The second thing is this is new for patients. And, you know, about half of the urology patients that we see are Medicare patients, and they may be technologically challenged. You're going to need a telemedicine manager in your practice because just telling a patient, oh, we're going to do a telemedicine visit doesn't work. They need to be given instructions on what time they're going to log in, what uh, the app is that they're going to use, what the technology is, and what to expect from the doctor. Because you can imagine if a patient has a lot of trouble downloading the program or logging in, it could really delay your day. Mm -hmm. You also have to have infrastructure in your billing department. They have to be able to differentiate a telemedicine visit from a regular in-person visit. Because clearly, you're not going to be able to do much of a physical exam on telemedicine, certainly not a prostate exam. So most of your billing is going to be done on time. Uh, and you have to be careful to document how much time was actually spent with the patient on the call. You also have to really monitor the situation right now, which I think is very, very, very fluid. You know, you can do a phone call right now, and that's just called a quick check-in visit. Uh, and that doesn't result in any sort of inpatient visit within the next 24 hours. Or you can do a full telehealth visit which for most providers right now does require audio and video. But some providers have loosened up the requirements allowing for audio only. And I can't stress enough how this is changing literally on a daily basis. So someone in the practice has to keep track of how this is going. Wow. So uh, I, there, there have been a lot of a number of concerns or challenges with telemedicine. And uh, as I said, you've been on the forefront. I guess one of the the biggest challenges was reimbursement. Is, is this been a sort of a boon for that or what do we expect? And then the other thing, I know there's there's concern about uh, cross states and different uh, medical uh, guidelines and so forth. What, how are we dealing with those things? 
So regarding um, billing, since this just started March 13th, we've submitted charges. We haven't actually got any payments in, in the last 10 days since we started uh, really going widespread in our practice with this. And we're a multi-specialty group now. So we have gastroenterology, internal medicine, all different um, specialties. It looks like though the coding level is a little bit lower. You know, we're doing this mostly for follow-up visits, some new patients, but mostly follow-ups. But as you know, a level four follow-up is gonna require 25 minutes of uh, face-to-face time on the phone uh, and video with the patient. 25 minutes is a lot longer than you think it is. So we end up doing a lot more level twos and level threes, which require 10 and 15 minutes respectively. And the other key thing is some of these televisits are going to require that the patient d- does come in for a urine culture, or if there's you know, significant flank pain that they come in for some sort of imaging study, possibly even scheduling surgery. Uh, some of them will need PSAs and, and some of them will ultimately need digital rectal exams. So you really have to have a system in place, a nurse manager working with each doctor to make sure these patients do follow up for the tests that need to happen. So most of these are being done out of your office, not uh, not from your home at this point. Do you record these things or um, what? what's the documentation other than just saying that you did it? Uh, with the app that we have, um, it's not recorded, but it does document uh, patient consent, that the patient consented for the visit, which is a key part of this, and that the patient actually initiated the call through the app, which is also important for most payers. And then I'm just documenting a regular um, clinic visit And because it's paid on parity, the codes are basically the same, uh, you know, level one through five that you would normally do. I'm not yet doing it from home. We're doing it right now in the office and we're scheduling the patients for televisits, just like we would schedule a patient for an inpatient visit. We're trying to bundle the visits so that you would see, for example, your inpatient visits that have to be done in the morning and your televisits in the afternoon. It's hard to go back and forth between the two. So uh, that's what we're trying to do. I do foresee as New York has gotten stricter and stricter with its restrictions on who can go out and when they can go out, even though health professionals are, professionals are um, exempted, the staff wants to limit their exposure. So I do see a time in the not too distant future, probably in the next week, where we spend part of our time from home uh, doing the visits from home. Two last questions. What percentage of the patients actually have a challenge and or are not on time for the, the scheduled call? And then uh, the final question, do uh, uh, you see any, any medical legal challenges here that are different than what you saw in the office? Two great questions, David. So um, probably about 15 to 20 percent of patients have a little bit of trouble. They're technically challenged. Uh, and that's where your telemedicine manager can come in, helping them to log on about five minutes before their scheduled visit to make sure they're logged on and ready to go. Uh, and I think it is going to uh, present some legal challenges, uh, notably in the documentation uh, and remembering to follow up with the patients and also with the billing. You have to be very careful with the billing. Um, if you're scheduling telemedicine visits 15 minutes apart, you can't have an entire day of level four visits. You have to be careful. Well, Evan, thanks very much. And we appreciate all your contributing to us. Uh, thank you for having me tonight. I really appreciate it.